And by the way, uh, Lou Ignaro, one of the folks that won the Nobel Prize for nitric oxide, he tells you, the military's got it wrong, man. You got it right. You don't breathe in through your nose slowly for a count of four and hold it for a count of four and then breathe out through your nose. You breathe out through your mouth with resistance, just the way you're teaching. Why? Because the whole point of breathing in and holding it for four is allow more nitric oxide to build up. But the problem is when you breathe out through your nose, you're pushing the nitric oxide out. So, you, so basically the correct way to do it is not what they teach. United States military, listen to me and listen to Lou Ignaro. You breathe in through your nose slowly, hold it for a count of four, and then breathe out with resistance as long as you can. And while you're doing that, more nitric oxide is getting built up in your nose. And then when you take another deep breath, hallelujah, your body's healthy. Welcome to Take a Deep Breath. My name is Mike Mayer. I'm your breathwork coach and host of Breathcast. And my job on this podcast is to bring you interesting, and exciting health and wellness and breathwork related guests and to have a conversation and understand their tips, tricks and techniques and hacks and give you something that's actionable that after watching these Breathcasts, you can take away, implement into your own life to increase your health wellness, vitality, energy, and all that good stuff. And today I have a wonderful guest introduced to you, Dr. Theodore Belfour. Now he is the inventor of something called the Homeo Block, which we're going to talk about in a second. And Dr. Theodore Belfour, or Ted Belfour, as some people may know, uh, graduated from New York University College of Dentistry, um, and he's a senior certified instructor for the International Association of Orthodontics. Now that is a mouthful. Um, he was in Vietnam in the 1960s as a dentist dealing with thousands of, of, of army patients um, and now he is a teacher uh, and inventor and, and an all-round just uh, force for good is how I put it. I loved speaking to this person. He's dedicated his life to helping people breathe and feel better and in this breath cast we're going to go deep in such things as Nasal, nasal, blah, nasal nitric oxide, the gas produced in our nose, the benefits of it. He reveals something that I hadn't heard of before. I've done 40 of these breath casts and um, he gave me a new way of looking at box breathing. And he says, we're doing it wrong and here's a way to do it. Very, very interesting stuff. And he talks about homeoblock, which is a device that people can wear in their mouths and it's sending signals to the body to help the bones grow better, the teeth to be better, to increase airways. So if you're somebody that's been struggling with their breathing, particularly at night, I think this is going to be a very, very interesting breath cast for you. So please stick all the way through because this is one of those breath casts which is just packed full of information from a, a gentleman that doesn't tend to do that many podcasts. And so I think you're going to find some wonderful information here. So I really do hope you enjoy it. Just a couple of messages before we get stuck into the to the breath cast. Um, so I've mentioned on a couple of breath casts about my course. Uh, it's functional breath work uh, basics. This is a foundational breath work course for anybody and everybody, whether you've been practicing breath work for a few months or you've been into it for a few years. It's almost finished. One of the reasons I like to share this at this point is it keeps me on track because I know that people are emailing me, asking when the course is ready. It's almost there. I think I'm almost ready to start filming. And thank you to all those people that volunteered as, as guinea pigs. Um, I've got back to most of you by now. And if I haven't, I will get back to you. So please bear with me. We don't need any more volunteers at this stage, but just to let you know, my plan is still to get that course out by Christmas. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, this podcast is brought to you in conjunction with my other YouTube channel, Binaural Beats Unleashed. The description and link should pop up somewhere and it is down below. A completely free YouTube channel where I'm working with different musical artists to bring different types of music to help us in different states of mindfulness. For example, you can go on there and put music in that'll help you remain in a deep focus for studying. So if you're at college or university or you're writing something, 
I think I've mentioned in the past I use this music when I'm trying to get on with the course and I don't want to be disrupted and I don't want a playlist of loads of different things kicking off. I just want one track. So they're about three hours long. There's stuff to help you fall asleep, stuff to help you with mindfulness. There's musical tracks on there. If you want to just do breath work and you want to just be guided by your own beat of your own drum. So please, if you can and you haven't done so already, uh, go over to Binaural Beats Unleashed, also on YouTube. Uh, click that subscribe button and the bell notification. And we're bringing you new music every couple of weeks, which uh, I hope you enjoy. And if you've got any requests, pop it down in the comments on either channel. And as I'm working with these different artists, I'll make sure that we uh, we get you covered. So thank you for doing that. Um, and then the last thing from me is good old Instagram, take a deep breath.co.uk. If you could go over there and give us a follow, that would be appreciated. Anyway, let's get stuck into this breathcast. Dr. Ted Belfour, uh, orthodontist and just all round wonderful inventor, human being. Take it away. Cheers. Okay, so I've hit record. So, so Dr. Belfort, uh, can I just say thank you so much, sir, for appearing on the Take a Deep Breath podcast. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to have some time with you. So, so big thank you. And I know we're going to have a fantastic conversation. And I think today's going to be about breath and posture. I think that's the bits we just said offline we're going to talk about. Wonder if you could start us off by maybe just giving us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, I was a dentist for 50 years. But 20 years ago, I stumbled upon something. Um, I was treating uh, a bunch of performing artists in New York City. Mm -hmm. And they would come in to see me and say, Doc, I got this one crooked tooth. I'm mm -hmm. getting a new headshot. Can you straighten it for me? I had no orthodontic training. But in New York, you can find anything. So I got lucky and I found a retired orthodontist who had practiced 60 years without using wires and brackets. He only used removable appliances. And I, I made a deal with him. He would come into my offices if he taught me everything that he knew. So he came in and we worked for a year and a half together. And one of the appliances he used had a unilateral bite block. So in other words, when you bit down, the teeth didn't come together. You hit only in one spot. Actually, that mm -hmm. spot is a critical spot. That's the region of your uh, upper and lower first molar. That's the fulcrum of your mandible. That's where you're going to chew something hard. And by, uh, and, and by accident, the, the actors started coming in and saying, their makeup artists are saying their faces are changing. Wow. wow. Singers were coming in and saying they're reaching higher notes. Wow. So uh, Bob, I told Bob, he said, Bob, I'm not interested. He's only interested in growing bone. So I picked up where he left off. And for the last 20 years, I'm trying to understand and explain how the body can grow new bone and can reposition bones, realign bones, generate symmetry. And by the way, the face and the airway are connected. When, we, when we're growing in the womb, the face grows around the airway. So these changes that I see in the face, there is a relationship in the airway. So that got me started. So uh, for many years, all I did was give folks wider smiles and younger faces. And that, I probably did that for 10 years, but then the demand for airway, I started looking at airway. Mm -hmm. Then I started looking at joy joint. Then I started looking at cervical spine. Then I started looking at head posture. Now I'm looking at cranial strain. It's endless. But yeah. the amount of information and so much that you learn, the idea is to understand how the body functions. You need to treat the cause of a problem. And what's missed today, you mentioned head posture. Mm. Well, simply enough, so many of us have forward head posture. We're on our cell phone, we're on our tablet, we're on our computer, or if you're a dentist, you're in the mouth all day with a forward head posture. When you bring your head forward, if you just had your head forward, you'd be looking down, but you lift your chin. Mm. That's where the problem is. Bring your head forward and lift your chin and the back of your tongue drops right down your airway and interferes with your breathing. So I think the idea is, is how to get all the folks out there 
who listen to this particular podcast to breathe better. So my goal right now is to teach you how to breathe better. Fantastic. So first of all, nobody's bothered ever bothered to teach you how to breathe in the first place. Mm -hmm. You think breathing like this is fine. It's not. That's not correct breathing, using all the wrong muscles. In fact, nothing happens up here. Mm -hmm. Correct breathing is abdominal breathing. You're breathing down here. Mm -hmm. But here's the issue. Nature does its best to provide us with the best opportunity for survival. But some of the things are out of the control of nature. For example, who thinks about this? The average person has about 3,000 square inches of body surface. Gravity puts 15 pounds per square inch on every inch of our body surface to keep us from floating off into space. You ever think about that? Probably. No. <laughs> So with gravity on our chest, if I ask you to breathe in slowly, you can do that exquisitely because your chest is expanding against gravity. You have control. Not so much for breathing out when 15 pounds per square inch sits on our chest. So the issue is we have a tendency to breathe out too rapidly. Why is that bad? Do you know the difference for breathing in and breathing out? This is breathing in. That's fight or flight. This is breathing out. That's relax and digest. Our body wants to be in the relax and digest mode, but we can only do it if we exhale correctly. What the body would love is if we exhale four or five times longer than we inhale, then we're more relaxed, aren't we? Everything's better. We can do that. Simple. Breathe in through your, with your abdomen. And when you breathe out, you purse your lips and create resistance. I probably am breathing out five times longer than I'm breathing in. It's very simple to do, mm -hmm. but it gets better. When you breathe out against resistance, you're expanding your airway, simple enough. And by the way, when you expand your airway, you increase the body's range of motion. Mm -hmm. One should look into some of the writings of Ron Riska, physical therapist, brilliant center theory, center out, They're from the center out, the body functions from the mm -hmm. center out. So if we expand our airway, we increase our range of motion. Mm -hmm. So now we already got breathing correctly. You're breathing in and you're breathing out with resistance. But there's more. I have forward head posture. I practiced dentistry for 50 years. If I want to get my head back, I bring my shoulder back. This is as far as my head goes. Mm. But if I breathe out with resistance, watch what happens. This is my correct posture. Mm. And the only way I can get there is by expanding my airway. Why? Remember I told you with your forward head posture and mm -hmm. you lift your chin, the tongue goes down the airway. It's very simple. There's a connection. This is the human tongue. This is the nose. This yes. is the back of the nose. All we need to do today is have a short jaw, which is what we're evolving. We're evolving shorter jaws. If we have a shorter jaw, the base of the tongue is in the airway. Mm -hmm. We no longer can breathe like this. So we bring our head forward to breathe and we breathe like this. Mm -hmm. So to get our head back, our tongue has to be up against the roof of our mouth. Mm -hmm. However, unfortunately, all those folks for so many years, they've had no room down here. They can't even swallow correctly. To swallow correctly, this bone, you call it an Adam's apple, a hyoid bone, 
lifts the tongue up when you swallow. You see it. You mm -hmm. see your hyoid bone move when you swallow. That's the muscles attached to that bone lifting your tongue. If you've got no room here, like I do, I have very little room. There's no place for the tongue to go. Those muscles become weak because they're not used properly. Guess what? Those muscles called the suprahyoid muscles, they prevent the airway from collapsing. Mm. If you don't swallow correctly, if you don't have enough room for your tongue, those muscles are weak. And the definition of sleep apnea, by the way, according to the American Association for Orthodontist White Paper, is the collapsibility of the airway. Nice. So I devised a simple appliance. It's so easy, it's ridiculous. It slips in, goes on your lower jaw, and has a bite block. And the position of the bite block I'll talk about next. Now, when you bite down, you've got plenty of room for your tongue. You're all open in there. Now, when you swallow, your tongue has to travel twice as far. And those muscles that lift your tongue via your hyoid bone, they become toned. And guess what? Your airway doesn't collapse at night. So ask your dentist to, to fabricate a pod, preventive oral device. It was FDA cleared in the US in 2019 for bruxism, TMJ, and headache. Mm -hmm. Ask your dentist for a pod. You wear it a couple hours a day. That exercises those muscles. And by the way, when you clench on that block, you're contracting the biggest muscle, the base of the tongue, the genioglossus, away from the back of the airway wall. Mm -hmm. You're preventing your airway from collapsing, just wearing a simple little device a couple of hours a day. And by the way, just think about it. If you've got that block there and you put your tongue flat up against your palate, what's going to happen? Your head's going to come back because your tongue is no longer in the airway. You're reversing it. Mm. But there's more to this. I think we started talking about posture. Posture is king. You have no idea. Why? If your posture is misaligned, your body is under stress for 24 hours a day. The military calls it a high allostatic load. That's stress to your body. You're posturally incorrect. Your body's under stress. What does stress do? Stress reduces the body's resilience. The government spent a billion dollars researching this for the troops in their field. They didn't want them. coming home with that posture contributes. That's how important posture is. And guess what? All of us are misaligned. Looking at you, your head is shifted to your left side. Look, if you look at your neck, you're going to see your head is shifted to the mm. left side. That is not good. Mm -mm. What can I do about it? So why it? did that happen? <laughs> why? Yeah, tell me why. why, did, why is that? I'm it's, sorry. It, so, so, please, sorry to interrupt. Please go on. Yes. Yeah. All right, nobody teaches this. It blows my mind. Mm -hmm. The significance of how our head sits on our cervical spine. Do the folks out there know that our head sits on a cervical spine with two legs? They're called occipital condyle. The joint between the occiput and atlas is known as the atlanto-occipital joint, but nobody talks about it. Well, just think, if you've got one leg shorter than the other, do you think your head's going to be on straight? Mm -mm. Of course not. But nobody even considers it. Considers mm -hmm. it. And guess what? It's the brain that deals with all of this. The brain does everything to keep our vision correct. Mm -hmm. The brain will level our first cervical vertebrae known as that. That's the head sitting on there. So the brain is doing everything it can to level us. But the information the brain gets is not only those two legs. It's also how your teeth come together, my fellow dentists out there. Wow. So if you have one short leg and your head wants to go like this, 
All you do is use that very same appliance with the bite block on the side where the short leg is. You send different information to the brain. And instead of your head being like this, it straightens up instantly in one second like that. Wow. Yeah. Nobody knows this out there. Nobody knows it because I do the research. I discover it and I'm not published. Mm. So I'm telling you folks, get your dentist to get you a pod. But they also have to learn how to determine which side it goes on. And you guys can have your, your, your significant others test you right now. All you do is you bite your teeth together, lift one arm, bite your teeth together and lift one arm. Then you have your significant other put all their weight on, their, on your wrist. Mm -hmm. You're going to uh, see that one side, you can support them. You're strong. Mm -hmm. And then you try it on the other side, teeth together, arm out, and you got nothing. That's the side with the short atlanto-occipital joint. And this is muscle testing for the atlanto-occipital joint. And that's the side that the block goes on. And when you bite on it, everything lines up correctly and you remove the body stress. Pretty interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. So, doctor, let me ask you. So, if you're biting on that, how how what happens next? What what is what is the process in the body that's making a change happen? If you're biting oh, on oh god, side? there's so much. Mm. All right, did recent research, uh, Journal of Orthodontics and Dental Facial Orthopedics, August 2018. They actually researched this on a pig, a mammal. Mm. So, it was a wonderful question. If you have a bite block, do you folks know out there that the only time your teeth legitimately come together is when you swallow? No, Otherwise, you're chewing the food in between, right? So anyway, when you swallow and your teeth come together and they hit that block, you send a vibration up into the bone. And furthermore, when you bite on it, you generate strain. According to the research, Journal of Orthodontics and Facial Orthopedics, cyclical signaling to just two cranial sutures reaches every single suture in the skull with the sutures as breakpoints. So you ask what happens? That's what happens when you bite down, you set up a vibration in the bone mm -hmm. and you generate cranial strain with the sutures as breakpoints. You know what the result is? widening and mineralization of the cranial sutures. There is nothing better for health. Why? The body's not interested in breathing. The body's interested in respiration. That's two different stories. When you widen the cranial sutures, you're that's all about the respiration up here. Do you know when we breathe, we have the central bone, the sphenoid, and then we have the occiput. This is known as the sphenobasal synchrondosis. Breathe in, it flexes. Breathe out, it extends. What's happening back here? On a very small level. Breathe in, it gets shorter and wider. Breathe out, it gets taller and narrower. It's mm -hmm. a pump. It pumps the cerebrospinal fluid to keep you healthy to have your pituitary operating, to have your sleep working, because without that sphenoid operating and generating movement in that cerebrospinal fluid, the pineal does not function correctly, and the pineal generates melatonin for your sleep. So you need all these cranial sutures functioning correctly. Mm. You need respiration. And furthermore, you need to function in a three-gas system not just oxygen and carbon dioxide, there's oxygen, nitric oxide and carbon dioxide. If it was just oxygen and carbon dioxide, we would not be healthy. Mm. Why? Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. We might have all the oxygen in the world, but that oxygen has to get into the little tiny capillaries to feed our brain, to feed the lining in our blood vessel. And that's what nitric oxide does. That's another form of respiration. There's the three gas system and there's respiration, the cranial respiration. Ask your osteopath how important it is. Mm. 
Any other questions? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We're just getting started, doctor. Yeah. So, so um, when it comes, so with me, for example, I've got like a bit of a lump here and I'm, I, I've spent the last two years, maybe more trying to stretch out but I constantly fall back in this position again. So what, what can I do? Is it the homeo oh, block? Is it something else? Fabulous, fabulous question. Fabulous question. So when your head's forward, as you mentioned, you have, there are two muscles that support your head. Hmm. There's the upper trapezius and there's the SEM muscle. They hold your head. Something has to hold it. Hmm. So these muscles are now tight. And by the way, if they get really tight, the circulation slows down, you get waste products in the muscles called trigger points, you can get cervicogenic headache. Mm -hmm. What can you do for all of this? Okay, we're gonna show you. All you do, sit up straight, drop your arms at the side. Now bring your hands up a little above your head like this, perfect. Now bring your arms all the way back and feel the contraction of your upper trapezius. Yeah. And then you drop your arm. And then you do it again. All the way back. Mm. Do that about five times, that contraction and relaxation, you're improving the circulation in your upper trapezius. All the way back. Yeah, Fine, you can go tight. back further. Let's go back further. That's about as far back as I can go. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's that really works. tight. Yeah. That works. Excellent. Yeah. So now, next thing. Next mm. thing. We are designed uniquely in this fashion, where we're hunter-gatherers. Mm. That means we could keep our eye on the prey, and our body could do anything to hunt without ever taking our eyes off the prey. Another, in other words, our head is decoupled from our spinal column. So the next thing you want to do, make your body happy, drop your head all the way down to your chest, bring it back as far as you can, mm -hmm. and do that about five times. Okay. You're going to start to feel good. You won't believe it. Mm. And are you doing any sort of breathing during this? Nose breathing, slow breathing, or doesn't keep really matter? Lips, keep your lips together mm. and just breathe through your nose. Yeah, this feels really nice because I'm, I'm very, very tender here. So that feels really nice uh, to do that. Well, I have to tell you, I'll explain why, you, why you're tender there. Mm. If you're under stress, mm. you breathe too rapidly. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. When you're stressed, you breathe too rapidly and too shallow. You cannot then breathe the correct way. That takes time. Mm. So what you're doing is using all the wrong muscles. You're, ac you're actually using that same upper trapezius as yeah. part, it recruits. Rapid breathing recruits the upper trapezius. Mm. Now, if you happen to be a clencher, when you clench, you'll, you'll understand that this anterior temporal right here, contracts, you clench, mm. you feel it pop out. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we have, we have a reflex, a reflex that takes that energy and takes it right into the same place. Oh, so wow. you can't win. If you're stressed out and you're breathing too rapidly, it goes here. Mm. If you're clenching and grinding, it goes here. Yes. That's why it's absolutely necessary to relieve that tension back there. Yeah. And we only began to decouple the head. Mm. After you drop it to your chest up and back, you put over your shoulder one way and then over your shoulder the other way, you do that five times. Mm. Okay, wonderful. Starting to feel really nice. And it then starts finally, to open, yeah. Then finally a complete rotation all the way around and then all the way back and you do that five times. Okay, I'm going to practice this every day, doctor. Thank you. Um, I wake up and my jaw is t sore because it's been clenched all night. And I'll do breathing exercises. I'll stretch and do yoga. How can we stop the clenching in our sleep? No, you don't want it. You, you don't necessarily want to stop it. You want to okay. utilize the energy of it correctly. Okay. See, the problem is my profession of dentistry looks at it the wrong way. 
They even make an appliance. Since 1901, dentists have been using the same, or maybe 1908, there's a little conflict there. Dentists have been using the same appliance for folks like you that clench at night. Mm -hmm. It's called a flat plane occlusal guard. And when you bite down, all your teeth come together on that and it protects your teeth beautifully. And that's all it's good for. Mm. Okay. That's not good. Mm. So furthermore, when you're clenching at night, the reason you're clenching is clenching contracts the fan-shaped muscle, which is the base of the tongue. That muscle is designed to stick your tongue out. So when you're clenching, your tongue wants to come forward out of your airway. That's the whole point. It wants you to breathe better. Yes. But you can't because your teeth are in the way. So once again, a simple little appliance with a unilateral bite block. And when you clench, boy, are you producing positive energy from that. First of all, now your tongue can come forward so you can breathe better and get a better night's sleep. But just as I mentioned before, you're also activating your cranial sutures, which need to move when you breathe. Guess what? The compression of that appliance is doing the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I've done the research. We have something that looks at our autonomic nervous system. Our autonomic nervous system is our fight or flight or relax or digest. So that's our basically that's our barometer of stress. So we can literally look at our stress level. So I've attested appliances that have bilateral block. Guess what happens to our stress level? And I've tested the unilateral block. What happens to our stress? Oh, wow, that's so interesting. So on one side, it goes down, but if it's on both, it will go up. Yes, because yeah. the reason is simple. It's two different kinds of forces. One is compression. The body can't stand it. The body doesn't understand it. If I give you a stick of gum, do you chew on both sides at the same time? No. Well, your body doesn't like that if, you, if you're in a compression state. Mm. The body's used to one side pressure, then the other side pressure, and that allows for the proper movement of the bones and proper respiration. Wow. I patented the unilateral bite block more than 15 years ago. And this is the homeo block? Was the homeo block one? was the first unilateral bite block appliance, but the homeo is much more complicated. Mm. The homeo block has a signaling system. And also, every time you swallow, you send a signal to the membrane around the roots of your teeth, through your teeth, the periodontal ligament. There are mechanoreceptors in that ligament that talk directly to your DNA. The homeoblock is a whole other ball game. The homeoblock oh, generates the growth and development. Uh, it talks okay. to your DNA. We have two different faces. We have the one we walk around with, but we also have the one in our genes, which is a far more primitive, well, a better developed face. We understand mm. that now. Every generation, we're getting smaller. Mm. So in our genes... Some of us are walking around with Neanderthal genes. Who says you can't express more genes? Of course you can. Mm. Epigenetics, that's what it's all about. We're not changing the DNA. All we're doing is upregulating genes that were never switched on before by making environmental changes or signaling to the DNA. When you signal the DNA cyclically, which is what we do, the DNA, even the histone, the protein that the double helix that Watson and Crick discovered wraps around, they grow little chemical tags that listen to the signal that you're giving them. And those chemical tags are known as the epigenome. And they allow for the genome to unravel and express new genes. And your whole face changes and your airway wow. grows bigger. Oh. That's a whole other story. The homeoblock is a different ball game, but... You, yeah. you, can't, you can't just order that. The doctors have to be specifically trained. They're, they're certified. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I, I would like to get stuck into that, but one last question about going back to uh, posture. Um, can you talk a bit about tongue tiredness? Because I'm tongue tied. And does that affect posture? Does that affect breathing or not really? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, actually, before I treat anybody, we have to release a tongue tie. Really? Like that tongue is key. Mm. I, I think I mentioned 
before. If you're tongue tied, if your tongue is locked down, then it can't properly, it doesn't lift correctly. It can't, it can't because it's tied down. So then mm. you're not taking these muscles that attach, the four muscles that attach to the hyoid bone, the stylohyoid, myelohyoid, geniohyoid, digastric, all those muscles that attach to the hyoid bone, they're not being utilized. They maintain that, particularly the geniohyoid goes from your hyoid to inside your chin, inside your mandible. Mm -hmm. It's the key muscle in the entire body for maintaining the airway from collapsing. So if you're tongue-tied, you're more prone to your airway collapsing. It's very simple. Mm. And collapsing doesn't have to be sleep apnea. Collapsing is just it has to be enough. Enough loss of oxygen that your brain, your hypothalamus goes, uh-oh, suffocation. And the result is a form of adrenaline in your blood takes you, it's called an arousal. You go from deep sleep to light sleep. Your heart rate picks up, your blood pressure picks up, your jaws stop moving, you take a deep breath all night long. In fact, one cyclic event, you know, what's, what's considered um, um, one desaturation event isn't even enough to, to make a dent on, on, on the record. In other words, if you send somebody for an overnight study, they don't feel good in the morning. Mm. What they're looking for out there is a 4% desaturation of the oxygen in your blood. In other words, your airway closed down so much yes. that the oxygen couldn't get into your blood and the volume of oxygen in your blood, the percent of oxygen in your blood dropped by 4%. Mm. That's what they're looking for. What happens if it drops by 2%? Mm. By 2% is enough to cause an arrhea, respiratory effort related arousal, and they miss it. You know, so these poor kids, it's usually the young folks, they feel terrible in the morning because they're going from deep sleep to light sleep to deep sleep to light sleep, not getting decent sleep all night long. Yeah. But nobody knows that because if they go for a test, they're saying you're fine. So I use high resolution pulse oximetry. I look at cycling time, the percentage of time that you're in a cycling event. And by the way, that's a tough one too, because you have to have three of those events uh, in at least 120 seconds. I, I mean, it's like, you know, everything is a measure. You think the body cares about these parameters? Mm -hmm. All we need to do to simplify things, we need to tone these muscles, we need to tone our airway, we need to breathe through our nose because that is pressurizing the airway. That allows it to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that, that's that's so in, interesting because, you know, I'm 40 nearly. I've got the tongue tiredness. I grind my, I, I clench my teeth. So I've been thinking for a while. I think I need to have that looked at. So thank you. That's been really, really helpful and hopefully help some people watching as well. Um, if we can talk a bit about... Uh, you're chewing and f chewing food and chewing soft food and hard food. And why are our schools changing? And can somebody in the forties and fifties, can we change the shape of our school? I think I know we can, but I want to hear from you. What, what's going on there? Why is there such a problem with our food? Yeah, and, see, and there's, been, there's been tons of research, even since the eighties. The best research was in 2004 when uh, Dan Lieberman uh, took two two groups of monkeys, Hyrax monkeys. He fed them both the exact same diet, mm -hmm. except one group, he nuked it, put it in the microwave. So the result was the food was in vivo, they call it 50% less strain. Mm -hmm. So it was soft and it provided 50% less strain on chewing. In one generation, the group that had the softer food had 10% less growth in some areas of the face. Mm -hmm. So there's tons of articles about chewing and facial growth. Mm -hmm. How do we grow in our face? First of all, it's all our genes, right? We know that. We're programmed. We have DNA. The problem is no gene ever turned itself on. You need an environmental input 
to switch the genes on for growth and development. And what is that? That's breathing, that's swallowing, and that's chewing. And by the way, what is the mecha, what is the language of the body? The body just doesn't say, okay, you're chewing good, I'm gonna switch on a gene. It's all cyclical pressure. Breathing is reciprocal, cyclical, alternating pressure. Chewing is cyclical, alternating pressure, and even swallowing is a volume pressure change. All of these things have to signal our body correctly to switch on all the genes so we reach our full potential and the face in our genes is the face that we're walking around with. And that doesn't happen with the diet we have today. The U.S. Department of Agriculture will tell you in the U.S. today, 63% of our diet is processed food with added sugars, fats, oils, grain, um, grains. I mean, just, it's a horrible diet we have, a horrible diet we have today. And the, if we look at our ancestors, the consistency of the food just 10,000 years ago was that of beef jerky. Mm. That's the kind of food we're chewing. And if we look at our primate ancestors that climbed trees, they ate fibrous fruit 90% of the day. And the bone structure they had was massive. Mm. So there's a direct relationship of the food we eat and how much we develop. So the next question is, if I chew gum, am I going to develop? Not now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> really? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't okay. work that way. <laughs> What do we need to chew then? Do we need to chew raw foods? Do we need to chew whole foods? No, food? no, no, no. I developed a signaling. It has to be a combination of specific signaling. Since we're fully grown, so so-called so oh, yes. fully grown adults, we can't just chew now and expect everything to change. Right. When you chew, you're using muscles. Muscles do not affect the growth of bone. Mm. We need to signal our DNA. And there is a specific design to my appliance which does that nothing else i'm sorry nothing else works really yeah so you have to signal the dna through uh the mechanoreceptors in the periodontal ligament you have to do cyclical signaling to the cranial sutures which is what i i designed i mean i just kind of developed it accidentally um but it was reversed people were coming and telling me that they had these changes and then i looked into what we were actually doing okay and i'm familiar with the term mewing which i believe is to put pressure on your upper palate and and to do a lot of chewing and i've seen these pictures online where people's faces have changed by mewing what's is is there a difference are you, are you saying from your research that doesn't well, work um, i i've never done the research on how much changes i used icom data from cone beam scans extremely mm. accurate but i have to tell you mewing's a good thing so what you're doing is you're actually generating more nitric oxide. Remember I said that the body doesn't care about breathing. The body cares about respiration. Mm. So when you're mewing, you're generating more nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is part of the three gas system. In my opinion, and there's very few people who agree with me, nitric oxide is more important than carbon dioxide, which is the chief hormone of the body. People don't understand how it works. I mean, you know, today uh, there's some folks out there, what they do is they follow uh, their leader and they uh, jump into cold water and they, 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 they do a hiking in their shorts in the Polish Alps and then they hold their breath. And guess what? They can hold their breath twice as long. What they don't understand is the quantum level of the body. As soon as we get in cold water, the body generates more of that nitric oxide yeah, that we're talking about, generates it in every single cell in our body in the energy factory. We have something called mitochondria, every single cell in our body. Those are the energy factories. Mm. When you jump into cold water, that produces more nitric oxide. Mm. When you hold your breath, you produce more nitric oxide and you also produce the most dangerous oxidant that we know, you know, oxidant, antioxidant, superoxide. However, in healthy individuals, 
that superoxide is broken down to hydrogen peroxide and oxygen, the hydrogen peroxide broken down to water. The result is we have more oxygen in every single cell in our body. It's a wonderful trick. Take a cold shower in the morning, then hold your breath as long as you can. Mm -hmm. You're generating more oxygen in every single cell in your body. Not a bad way to go. Yeah. Wow. That's quantum. Yes. That's how we improve our oxygen. That's not breathing. That's part of respiration. Mm. That's how the body works. If more folks understood how the body works, we can be healthy. And I remember how we got started. The simplest thing is to improve your posture. Breathe in, breathe out. Get your head back. I should be talking to you like this. Mm. Then, basically, that's the thing that you really need to do, folks. Mm. that's really the way to go. And by the way, for you guys out there, why don't you just do what the special forces do before they go into action? <laughs> guys like that stuff. They teach the special forces. Breathe in through your nose to a slow count of four. Hold it for a slow count of four. And then breathe out to a count of eight. Remember, I was telling you, it's more important to exhale. I'm going to advance it. I'm going to say, no, you don't breathe out to a count of eight. You breathe out until you can't breathe out anymore. You push all the air out of those little air sacs that you're never using. Mm -hmm. And then when you breathe in next time, you got more lung capacity. Guess what? Lung capacity and longevity have been linked. Breathe like that every day if you want to live longer. Wow. How long would you breathe like that for? Five minutes, 20 minutes? What would you recommend? Well, you know, it's really good for you. So, you know, it depends on who you are. Some folks, you know, they feel comfortable doing it. You know, they can do it for an hour at a time. But mm. most of us, uh, average folks, you know, if we do, do it for four or five minutes and. <laughs> We're fine, you know, that's enough. So it's really what you're capable of doing. It's like pushing your body. But if you, it's, it's like going to the gym. I mean, some folks are going to go to the gym and they're going to lift a five pound weight. And other people are going there and they're going to lift 150 pounds, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's good for you. So as much as you do it, fine. Do it as much as you can. Yeah. And there's always, a, you know, there's no limit because it, it, it never does you any harm. So you can do it as much as you like. Mm. So breathe in nice and slow, pause. Hold it, uh, hold yeah, breathe it. into a count of four, of slow yeah. count of four. Hold for four. Hold for a slow count of four. And then go as slow and as long as you can. Yeah, and what about humming, Dr. Bell, for? Any benefits with the humming? Yeah, so the humming, uh, basically, now, as I said, uh, well, we, we didn't really explain. It's nitric oxide, which um, um, is a couple of guys, three guys won the Nobel Prize uh, in 1998, uh, discovering nitric oxide is a, is a signaling mo molecule in the cardiovascular system. But furthermore, oh, in 1992, it was voted molecule of the year. Now, this is an interesting point. So this, all this nitric oxide that I'm talking to you about, Nobel Prize, molecule of the year, nobody talks about it. It's generated every single, while you're sitting here right now, you're generating nitric oxide in the paranasal sinuses, the four sinuses, the frontal, the ethmoid, the sphenoid, and the maxillary sinuses. All these spaces in our skull are generating nitric oxide. What's the goal? The goal is for that nitric oxide to get into the back of your nose. So when you breathe in, like I just told you, special forces breathing, you get that deep into your lungs, that nitric oxide gets into your blood, goes through your circulation, open up those little capillaries in your brain and your lining of your blood vessel. All right, I have a real gripe. And I'm glad to go public with this. I'm too old to care what they say about me. But this has been a sin. In the 1950s, scientists knew there was some substance in the lining of blood vessels. They called it epithelial derived relation factor. When you had it, it didn't matter how much cholesterol you had. 
it never deposited. In order for the cholesterol to deposit and generate plaque, there has to be a damage to the lining of the blood vessel. But if you had this su substance, the lining of your blood vessels stayed so healthy, you never, it didn't matter how much cholesterol you had. In 1992, they found out that that EDRF was nitric oxide, one molecule of the year. Really? But instead of that, they, instead of promoting breathing through your nose to get all that nitric oxide to make your blood vessels healthy, they promoted billions of dollars of cholesterol medication mm -hmm. to lower your cholesterol so it didn't deposit in the lining of your blood vessel when all you had to do was breathe correctly. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Tragic. Tragic, isn't it? That's the stat is that statins that you're talking about? Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a hoax. Yeah. Oh, and heck. I don't care who, you know, you know they're going to come down on me for this, but, mm. you know, it, it's absurd. Nobody mm. is out there explaining how to tell you how to breathe correctly. And by the way, uh, Lou Ignaro, one of the folks that won the Nobel Prize for nitric oxide, he tells you, the military's got it wrong, man. You got it right. You don't breathe in through your nose slowly for a count of four and hold it for a count of four and then breathe out through your nose. You breathe out through your mouth with resistance, just the way you're teaching. Mm. Why? Why? Yeah. Because the whole point of breathing in and holding it for four is allow more nitric oxide to build up. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when you breathe out through your nose, you're pushing the nitric oxide. Ah, yes. So, okay. so basically the correct way to do it is not what they teach. United States military, listen to me and mm. listen to Lou Ignaro. You breathe in through your nose slowly, hold it for a count of four, and then breathe out with resistance as long as you can. And while you're doing that, more nitric oxide is getting built up in your nose. And then when you take another deep breath, hallelujah, your body's healthy. It's all there. It's, we've not wasted it because we're not breathing it out. Dr. Belfort, that's, that's, fa oh, that, do you know what? I don't know why I never thought about that before, but that's so interesting. Yeah. Nobody has. Nobody yeah. has. Yeah. I've been wow. spending 20 years thinking about it. So the point is that all these guys, they have, you know, the knowledge is out there. The problem is we're stuck in parameters of what we learn. Mm. And to get outside of the box is very difficult. They make it very difficult for you. Mm. So even the military doesn't understand the correct way to breathe. I hope they're listening. I hope so. Yeah. D Dr. Belfort, as, as we come to the end, I want to say a, a big thank you because this has been really, really interesting and a great learning experience. So I'm so grateful. Is there anything we haven't covered that you wanted to share? I, I know we've covered quite a bit, but are there any subjects that you still wanted to go over or you're happy with the bits we've talked about? Well, I want to thank you for this opportunity. I think we covered a lot of bases. Uh, we covered a lot of, a lot of significant bases. Mm. And, uh, um, I think that um, uh, basically what people most need to be aware of today is unfortunately nature is working against us right now. Mm. We're not, we're de-evolving. Mm. We're not evolving stronger. You know, survival of the fittest was a very great idea, but that's not who humans are. Humans do not wait for a mutation that's superior over the millennia to evolve. We can evolve one generation to the next. Be aware of that. Mm. So everything we do, everything we put in our body, Weston Price was the first one, the first epigenetist. He recognized that diets in one generation can change you. He went around the world and looked at civilizations, compared primitive civilization, modern civilization, right next to each other. Two twins, one in modern and one in primitive. And the primitive was so much better developed. Our modern diet is killing us. That's what I want to let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, where, can, If people want to know more, where can we send them? Can we send, send them to your official website? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Theodore Belfort.com, my website. And they can send inquiries to me 
Um, I'm training doctors now everywhere uh, to do treatment. Chances are there's a doctor near you that's learning the homeo block. So. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. This is, this, I think this information is so important that we get it out of there so people can understand what's going on and what they can do to affect their health. So, so thank you again. And I hope we can, we can convince you to come back again one day in the future and maybe do another one. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Guys, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next, uh, the next breathcast. Thanks everybody. Thank you, doctor. Bye everyone. Hey everybody, thank you for sticking right the way through to the end of this breathcast. I really hope you enjoyed the guest that we just had. If you haven't done so already, please like, subscribe and hit that bell notification because we've got so many more top experts and wonderful human beings coming onto this show and I don't want you to miss any of those great conversations. So please do that and that would be really, really appreciated. Um, just a couple of quick messages for me. Um, if you haven't done so, please leave a comment um, and, and hit that like button. I read every single comment that goes onto this channel and I do my best to respond to them. So you might have a question for me, maybe a question that you want me to ask to a future guest or you just want to put something into the community, take a few seconds to do that. It helps the YouTube algorithm and it's a way for, for us to connect as well. So I'd really appreciate it. Just a couple of comments. Anything that you've got would be absolutely great. Um, I do have a second YouTube channel called Binaural Beats Unleashed. And if you haven't done so and you wanted to subscribe over there, it's completely free. I'm working with a number of artists at the moment to bring different binaural beats. It's essentially different frequencies um, that are able to help us get into different states. So for example, I use binaural beats to study when I'm building my breathwork courses. Um, and I just go onto YouTube, type in binaural beats for study pop in the headphones and it just helps me get into state for the next few hours where I'm focusing, no distractions, there's no rap music going on, I can just crack on and get stuck into something and not be distracted. But you can also use binaural beats for meditation, mindfulness, yoga, people use them to help them get to sleep, they want to use them to kind of get them into a different state. Freeform breath work is another great thing, you can put on an hour's binaural beats track, you just lay down. Just bring some awareness to your breath, see how you're breathing. Maybe you want to alter it in some way, maybe do some stretching, you know, so some wonderful things there. So help me grow that community. Please pop on over, hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. And we'll grow in another way for, for us to connect. Um, I'm on Instagram, takeadeepbreath.co.uk. If you could hit that uh, follow button on there, that would be Ace. There's loads of content that we're putting on there. Try and cut clips up and, and just have, you know, another way for you to digest some wonderful information about breath work, breathing exercises and information from our, our top experts. Sometimes we don't have an hour to watch a whole breath cast. So I'll do my best to maybe get a three or four minute clip together just so to give some information. Go, oh, I, I forgot that or I didn't know that particular thing about breathing. So yeah, take a deep breath.co.uk on Instagram. And finally, um, I've taken some of the uh, top breathing exercises from this channel um, and I've converted them into mp3s and just put them in a little mp3 store and the link is below um, for four or five dollars you can own one of these breathing exercises forever ad free if you're going somewhere you're not gonna have wi-fi you want to turn your phone onto airplane mode that's yours you keep that there's no ads and four or five dollars just comes my way to support the channel and the breath cast so hopefully it's a bit of a bit of a win-win you get an exercise for life and we get a, a couple of dollars to help us go in keep going um so that's it so thank you so much uh we will see you on the next breath cast or breathing exercise um if you're here for a breath cast and now you're thinking what should i do next maybe it's worth uh trying one of our breathing exercises i'm going to link to a couple of them now so you can try those breathing exercises or maybe you want to check out another breath cast like this one so we'll uh there we go thank you so much take care cheers <laughs>